D-Day, the 6th of June, 1944. The Allies land on the Normandy coast. The Americans land at Utah and Omaha beaches. The British land at Gold and Sword beaches. On Juneau Beach, Canadians and British land. The Normandy beaches were heavily fortified with concrete bunkers, barbed wire and machine gun posts, anti-tank guns and light and heavy artillery. The beach was covered in obstacles with mines attached to destroy landing craft. On D-Day, 156,000 Allied troops landed on the Normandy beaches. At Omaha Beach, the DD amphibious Sherman tanks were launched at 5,000 yards all but two sank in the rough seas. Unsupported by the Shermans, the resistance was particularly fierce. The first wave suffered disastrous losses. With their orders, British and American destroyers moved close to Omaha Beach to target strong points. At Juneau Beach, due to rough seas, the armoured divisions ignored orders to launch the amphibious tanks at 5,000 yards and launch them at a thousand yards. Nevertheless, they were still late arriving. The Canadian 3rd Infantry Division stormed ashore at Juneau Beach. It wasn't until the ramp opened and the Canadians were in the water that the German machine guns opened up on them. Those who survived were met by a high sea wall with an entanglement of barbed wire on top. The Canadian troops suffered 85% losses in the first wave. Dispersed around Cannes were the 21st Panzer Division. Late in the afternoon, they counterattacked in the dangerous gap between the Canadians and the British 3rd Division. The British anticipated this and were waiting with Sherman Firefly tanks which fired 17-pound shells. The British knocked out 13 Mark IV Panzers in minutes. In sight of their objective, Capiquit Airfield, exhausted and low on ammunition, the Canadians stopped. During the night of the 6th of June, the fanatical 12th SS Hitler Youth Panzer Division moved in opposite the Canadians. At daybreak, as the Canadians continued towards their objective, the 12th SS Panzer Division opened up at point blank range. The following Canadian troops were overwhelmed. Wounded men and unarmed prisoners were shot by the 12th SS Panzer Division. 18 Canadian prisoners were taken to the Abbey Ardennes. One at a time they were questioned, taken outside and shot in the back of the head. During the D-Day campaign, 156 Canadian prisoners of war were murdered by the 12th SS Hitler Youth Panzer Division. 8th of June, the 12th SS Panzer Division suffered heavy casualties when they ran into the Canadian Regina Rifles anti-tank guns. Can was a hard nut to crack, with the 21st Panzer Division in position on the high ground. German armoured divisions were pulled into the battle at Cannes, taking some of the pressure off the Americans. By the third week, the whole of the eastern coast was in American hands and the capture of Cherbourg imminent. Cherbourg's most formidable defences were its coastal batteries. The Royal Navy and the US Navy attack Cherbourg from the sea. The American army attacks from the land. On the 29th, the German garrison in Cherbourg was overwhelmed and surrendered. Preceded by heavy bombing and shelling, the American army fights its way south. Hedgerow by hedgerow, the Americans battle their way through the Bacage. The Panzer divisions, which fronted the Americans, fought fiercely, even though they had been reduced by two-thirds after their battles with the British and Canadians. The Canadians retake Cabby Creek Airfield, ousting the murderous 12th SS Hitler Youth Battalion. Cannes is heavily bombed. The British and Canadians take Cannes, the decimated remains 
of the Hitler Youth retreat. Operation Goodwood, 18th to 20th of July 1944. The British and Canadians break out of Cannes. The British attack from the east, their own minefields slowing them down. The Canadian 2nd and 3rd Divisions attack from the west. The Allied tank crews hated the German 88 guns, which could knock out a tank before it could get close enough to return fire. The battle lasted two days before heavy rain stopped all movement. In those brief two days, the British and Canadians suffered 5,537 casualties. The British lost 200 tanks, but had 500 replacements in reserve. There is no doubt that the British and Canadians kept the Panzer Divisions pinned down at a critical time. Operation Cobra, 25th of July to 1st of August 1944. 1,000 flying fortresses and liberators bombed enemy positions prior to the start of Operation Cobra. Fighting fiercely, the American armoured divisions quickly gained momentum. The whole German front in Normandy was breaking up. The American 4th and 6th Divisions were virtually unopposed. 22-30 hours, 6th of August, the Germans counterattack at Morta. Prior to the attack, the code breakers at Bletchley Park warned the Americans about the counterattack. The Germans attacking at night through a heavy miss overrun many American outposts. Hill 314 were surrounded and under intense enemy bombardment. With no food and low on ammunition, the Americans refused to surrender. They suffer 300 casualties out of 700 men. When the mist lifted, RAF rocket-firing typhoons halted the enemy. Operation Totalize. The night of the 7th of August, the Canadian 1st Army launches an offensive towards Falaise. With them are the 1st British Corps and the 1st Polish Armoured Division. Over 150 tanks were lost. There were 315 Canadian and Polish casualties. 1,327 German prisoners were taken. 16th of August 1944, the Canadians fought their way into the ruined city of Falaise. 17th of August 1944, in a pincer movement, the Canadian 1st Army and the Polish 1st Armoured Division moved to encircle the German Army. The US 1st and 3rd Armies moved towards the Canadians closing the gap. The British 8th and 30th Corps advanced rapidly. German panzer groups move to the neck of the pocket to keep it open. The Canadians take Tra. The Falaise Gap is only three miles wide. The 2nd SS Panzer Corps and 9th SS Panzer Division counterattack, but encounter the Polish division of British Cromwell tanks. The Germans can only escape the Falaise pocket by night. By day, they are attacked by RAF and the US 9th Air Force. On August the 20th, the Falaise Gap is finally closed. Decimated and mauled, German Army Group B retreats northward. Most of their heavy equipment has been destroyed. The German Army retreats northwards. In pursuit, the British to their rear. To the east, the Americans. To the west, the Canadians and Poles. The battle for Normandy was over. But what lay ahead of the Canadian army was worse than they could possibly imagine. The first Canadian army, the Forgotten Army.